Sports. We are joined live now by Michael Link, Professor Emeritus, Faculty of Law at Western University and former UN Special Rapporteur for Human Rights in the Occupied Palestinian Territory. Thanks so much for joining us once again, Michael. My pleasure. Thank you for having me again. Israel's military has ordered the evacuations of more than a million civilians in Gaza City. As you probably know, Gaza is tiny. It's packed with 2.3 million people. Half of its population is children. You're familiar with the region, the geography. Is that even possible? Where would these Palestinians even go? Well, what the Israeli plans would be for this 1.1 million people in Jabalia refugee camp and in Gaza City to flee south uh, in the Gaza Strip. Keep in mind that this is an impoverished strip. Some, but not very many, own cars. Um, there's, the, there's no real uh, set transportation system there. The ability to be able to evacuate that many people, uh, other than on foot, um, uh, is going to be uh, is going to be a, a huge challenge for humanitarian workers on the ground. Many don't want to go. Uh, many fear that um, if uh, if they uh, if they do leave, they're going to come back to an entirely flattened. Uh, a city and flattened refugee camps. On the other hand, of course, they're scared uh, because there's been a rain of, uh, of uh, bombs. Over 6,000 bombs have been reported to have been fired into Gaza since the uh, uh, beginning of hostilities last weekend. Um, and uh, with an imminent ground invasion, which is what the evacuation um, has been called for in order to allow Israel to, uh, to effect uh, a ground invasion, um, they are faced with, uh, with very poor choices on whether to stay or whether to go. And, and the Israeli border is closed, we know. Hospitals are, are overflowing as well. There's no power, no water. Food is running out in Gaza. The U.N. has already deemed this order impossible, and it's warning of devastating humanitarian consequences. Talk to me about your concerns from a humanitarian standpoint. Well, you're right with respect to this. And remember that the um, bulk of, um, of social services exist in the north of the Gaza Strip, which is uh, where Israel is calling for, the, uh, for this large evacuation. Most of the uh, major hospitals, including Al Shifa Hospital uh, in Gaza City, are included uh, in the north. Uh, the director of the, uh, of the hospital has already said he and his staff will not evacuate because of the dire need by thousands and thousands of Gazans for medical treatment and uh, and medical care. Um, so this creates that kind of humanitarian issue. We've already seen some of the uh, uh, missiles from Israel hitting uh, uh, Palestinian ambulances, uh, hitting Palestinian hospitals, hitting Palestinian health care centers. Um, keep in mind as well that people, ha as you've uh, said, haven't had food uh, for, uh, for several days. Food is rapidly running out uh, in the area. Uh, we have over 400,000 Gazans out of, out of the population of 2.3 million who are already internally displaced, many of them sheltering in uh, UN schools or UN health clinics or other uh, UN marked buildings uh, in that area. For them to leave, um, they're mostly going to be heading into open space in the, in the south where there's absolutely no infrastructure to be able to care for that size of uh, large population of, uh, of internal refugees, let alone be able to supply them with the food or electricity or sanitation that they would so desperately need. And Michael, what can the international community do at this point to try and urge for a, a, urge a ceasefire at this point? Well, you're right. Uh, negotiations, negotiations, and negotiations. I, uh, there is no military solution to this. This has been tried before. This is the sixth major uh, assault on Gaza in the last 15 years. And all we know from the past is is, a, is the huge human misery that it's going to wind up uh, cre creating. And this one has all the potential to be on a much greater scale than ever before. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing pictures out of Gaza now in terms of the neighborhoods in some of the refugee camps and in Gaza City that remind us of uh, Hamburg or London in 1944 mm -hmm. during the height of bombing there. Michael, this is a historic conflict. We know that. But this order is unprecedented. Can you speak to that, the significance of these latest developments? 
Sure. I know of no other um, uh, situation in the long history of the Middle East and, uh, uh, until we go back all the way to 1948-49, when you see such a large exodus of, uh, uh, of people, almost all civilians, being asked to, to wind up leaving without any kind of uh, humanitarian infrastructure uh, to wind up servicing them. The, uh, the economy of, uh, of Gaza already uh, was fragile after a 16-year-old, uh, fairly comprehensive blockade of Gaza, an air, land, and sea blockade. The economy is already on its back. The healthcare system is, is like you'd find in any poor third-world country. Uh, for them to be able to cope with what is now this, this uh, demand for a massive evacuation uh, of uh, half the population to the to the south, where there are no facilities to be able to care for them, uh, is without precedent uh, in. Uh, uh, than anything I can think of uh, in uh, the last 20 uh, or 30 years uh, of the variety of wars we've seen in between Israel and, uh, and the Palestinians and uh, Israel's neighbors. Michael Link, Professor Emeritus, Faculty of Law at Western University and former UN Special Rapporteur for Human Rights in the Occupied Palestinian Territory. Thank you for your perspective. Thank you very much for having me.